Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this week's video let me tell you this here is really going to be pushing my skills to the limit not so much on the technical ability more so the logistics so usually the biggest pipe I normally do is around 12 inch 14 inch if, if, if there's the job but now I have 24 inch pipe to do and not any old 24 inch pipe look at it two elbows a square branch it is a nightmare these are the two elbows that are joining together to make a semicircle these so to put into perspective the center measurement from here to the center of the pipe is 915 mil here's the plan this here is a, a pre-made plan someone else got a mess up on and i'm re recycling it look at the size of it compared to a pallet i have manipulators you don't know that i don't use manipulators but i have them now this is the normal rollers that I'll be using to turn all my pipe on and this is the bulky manipulator. So, yes, wish me luck on this pipe. I think the best part is here. So if you couldn't tell already, I was extremely excited to start making this pipe. Usually I mess with a lot smaller pieces, but this was not the biggest I've done, but one of the biggest I've done. Definitely the two elbows made it physically the biggest, but not the longest or the biggest um, diameter pipe that I've done. It was a fun one to do, but it came with its own challenges. No! Pipe. He wanted to put it on these rollers, so now they're on these rollers, and now we've got to adjust our height to, to suit the fucking rollers. So, as you could hear, I was doing a little bit of moaning as to the fit up of this elbow onto the other elbow. I suggested if we sat the whole pipe on some 8 inch off cut piece of the pipe, it would all be the same level and in theory adding this piece onto the side would be a little bit easier because everything's sitting at the right height. My um, crane operator buddy, he suggested, you know, put it on the rollers because then it would be easier to lift up and down, which, you know, fair enough, it makes a good point. But then what happened, um, we had to adjust the second elbow to a custom height that the rollers was, which I needed to use two pallet trucks and they weren't then they weren't the best to um to use there was a lot of back and forth twisting and there was a lot of play in it so when you let go of it it would settle into a different position but with any fit up you fiddle with it fiddle with it fiddle with it and then all of a sudden it just slots into place and then you're ready to tack it up so that's what i was doing here i um i realized i could only set it up so good in one position without putting a tack on it so i used my um i used my homemade device to close the gap on the top so i can put a tack there and then i can pump up the pallet jacks or let them down to um open up the gap at the bottom while also maintaining the bolt hole level as well as the face of the flange level to the rest of the pipe so it was a bit fiddly and the gap the gap came out pretty decent to all things considered it was it was one side was closed and the other side was no more than three mil which was okay So the reason why I'm so excited, the measurements, everything's just coming together and, and working out fine. Even though this is a big pipe, there's still only a 3mm tolerance for the measurements. 
So it's nice to know that making two parts separately, they go together and they're within the measurement, which means no messing about. I wouldn't imagine what I'd have to do if the measurements are out, you know? So yeah, happy days. And um, yeah, this, this pipe here took me, I believe, a day and a half to make. A day and a half. I started off in my bay and then I took it out here to finish and then I had another one exactly the same a little bit shorter on the bottom piece without a square branch but between I started Thursday worked Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday four days basically and I got two of them done so horizontally I leveled off the face of the flange and the two bolt holes and then I lifted it up vertically to then level off the second orientation of the flange um, not to the other flange that you can't see that's not in shot and then now I check the overall measurement bang on happy days now I can weld it up I can link some other videos that explain how I do a positional weld a bit better actual positional weld specific videos this video here was more of a um, bring and use lot along with something I've never done before these big old pipes so I thought it would be interesting for use lot to see so I will link, check the links in the description if you want to know about positional welding. I'll briefly talk over it right now with what I'm doing. So I've got a 3mm gap. I have at least a 1mm landing edge on both sides just because you will get a lot of penetration going around like this. My techniques for welding is when there's a big gap I weave up and down. When there's a small gap I stay square into the, the middle of the gap. and your settings help you to um, not blow through but still get the penetration and your angle your torch angle is very important with this what i find is it's very hard to to not blow through while pushing your mig wire so you can push or you can drag when i drag i get a lot more build up of material when i push there is I find I find this a lot more risky so unless I've got a very tight gap I'd always try to drag and also it's easier for me to see when I drag as well um, I'm, I'm aiming ever so slightly on the top landing edge of the prep because I know gravity will pull it down to the bottom and yeah it's just it's, it's a bit hard to explain it because you go by feel when you're welding everything is just feel and you kind of know what you need to do so I'm going to do a, um, sorry, the, the amps that I'm running at, that's it. The amps I'm running is, I believe, around 130 amps Synergic. It's a root setting that the Fronius welding machine has. So you don't control the wire speed or the voltage. It's automatically done by the computer on the, on the machine, which also does a few fancy things in the background to help you have a consistent, better route rather than just adjusting the wire speed and voltage on your own um, the wire I'm using is a 1 mil solid core wire copper free so it's coated in something else not copper solid so it's not flux or anything it uh, I am using a 12% co2 mix for the gas running at around 25 C I think it's liters a minute something quite quite high because obviously where I'm doing pipe the pipes rolling away from you so it's not always a flat position so the route went in i'm grinding the some tram lines at the top and bottom of the the route you know just in case there's any lack of fusion or overlap gets rid of that so it's not put into your weld then i'm going to do a hot pass hot pass or a fill in this case here i was, I was more trying to fill it up and then after i'm going to do a triple run cap in the video i only do a double run cap but when I put the camera away I thought let me put another run on it and I do a third run position that I'm doing now trying to stay square on to the center of the pipe this one here I don't really push or drag I just stay square on to it gives you a nice profile what I'm watching is my bottom if I watch the bottom of the weld because I know that it's going to um, the top's going to come out nicely and I just want to make sure that the bottom doesn't have any overlap or starts to look crap really or starts to sag because you have to focus on one thing and the other thing will take care of itself now the second or so the first cap 
again all I'm focusing on is the bottom I'm making sure that the bottom comes out nicely and it is a nice profile all the way around not trying to let it sag and I'm also making sure it touches the the edge of the elbow then I can move on then I grind back the top of the weld just so it removes material so when I place the material in there it gives you a nice profile rather than it just sitting too proudly out from the weld um, I turn down the amps as well so the first this is quite big pipe so without realizing I could have been doing the first run around 180 to 200 amps but the second run I do definitely turn down the power and I change my torch angle a little bit because you need to be more more horrors square on and horizontal onto it so like if you look at my position now I'd lift up my elbow a bit more so the so the torch isn't shooting up too much and it's more lower at least I believe that's what I do who, who knows like I said it's all it's all by feel right now I was panicking because I never realized my uh, I melted my mask you can see the the screen is a bit distorted but what's never happened to me before is the glass on the inside the, the lens it went black and I couldn't I couldn't see it was completely destroyed but once it cooled down it went back to normal the gas light to close up and yeah it was looking nicer and nicer and nicer I think the best part is here I think it came out pretty good finally the last part is the socket this here is a one inch socket and and guys please this here is not a thread protector it's not scrap it is actually a weld on socket that can hold i believe like 40 bar or something like that something silly the the, the pipes that i'm doing we they're only they're operating pressure I, I believe is six bar something low and it's only chilled water going through it so before you start commenting saying ah in the oil field you could do that in here and that just just bear in mind you don't know the specifications that I'm working to you don't know the industry or, or the, the, the the client that this is going to and better more you are not smarter than the people who actually commissioned this job to be done so the factory I work for and the client so that's all I'm gonna say bear that in mind before um, you start giving comments as to what I'm doing wrong because that just makes you seem like you're right and this whole factory is wrong yeah, just that's one thing that just does does get to me every now and again is where people just there is so much differences in specifications and techniques from even country to country even company to company let alone countries you understand so I think I think a lot of a lot of welders and a lot of people that watch welding content should take a second before they they, they spread all of this uh, information that they're doing it right and you're doing it wrong they should take a second and just think that you know what instead of thinking that i'm doing it wrong just look at this and think wow okay so what i'm doing must be way better than here and that gives me confidence to know that um my stuff isn't going to leak do you know what i'm saying when i see bad when i see bad welds i look at it i can judge it and i can say that is a bad weld but i keep it to myself but what that makes me do it makes me realize the quality of my work and makes me think rough I'm actually decently good at this as well then or it makes me look at alright if that's not going to leak then my welds aren't going to leak so take a second and just relax yourself people you know this is um, there's so much different ways to do it and I'm going to finish that but yeah so this is the socket it, it's a scary piece to put on because it's at the it's at the end it's the last thing to put on and if it's wrong in the wrong position the pipe's condemned or at least if it can be altered at minimum i'll have to do another positional chop off this piece of pipe and also um put a new flange on so hours of work just for a silly mistake of a socket being in the wrong position but yeah i root it and i cap it yes you don't need to clean it the power i'm capping this little socket at like 200 amps I'm burning through it there is no no issue with the way that I've done it I'm trying to use a glove to protect the the strop as well but as soon as this is done everything gets cleaned up taken off and I'm a happy boy I've got some photos coming up at the end so if you stay tuned so I'm going to climb in here it. for two reasons one to see the route and also there's a few spots I know I need to clean so 
because I can climb inside, I know I can get them and I'm not going to worry too bad. But this here is the route. I don't know how much of it you can actually see. So, it was this spot here I know I wanted to clean off. But yeah, the route went all the way in. All the way in, all the way around. So everybody, if you lot like what you've seen, the best way to support me is you hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that it's a good video to watch and it pushes it forward to more people to see. And that helps me out the most. Um, you can also subscribe as well. That's something that helps me. But yes, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. This video is finished and I will see you lot in the next one. Enjoy.